small break here. Long walks on the beach isn't something I do often. Actually, Sensei, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a breather too. I'll be sure to keep our librarian here company. Uh, I don't mind either. After all, I have some things I want to talk about with Hanako. So, what did you want to talk about? Well, it's about history. Hinata mentioned that you were quite fond of historical literature, like me. She said you might be even smarter than me. So I wanted to put that to the test. Oh? Worried that you might not be the smartest one here, are we? <laughs> Don't worry. My knowledge may fail in comparison to yours, but it'd still be fun to test myself. <sighs> well, I suppose it's worth a try. Let's start with something simple. Which three academies formed a tea party? A quiz, hmm? I see! You are testing me to see if I'm even worth your time. Well, that's quite easy. The menage a trois of Pater, Filius, and Sanctus. I must say, I'm quite impressed. As you answer it as if it were common knowledge. Most people tend to give me a blank look and accuse me of making it up. But if you know about that, then you must know about... The Diary of Sister of the Justina Council of Saints. The same diary rumored to have its entries tempered by the church. All for the purpose of making Sister appear to have pro-war views after her leave. Whereas rumors of her hatred of the Gehenna General at the time contradicted third-party reports from other schools, stating that they had got along just fine. Oh, skipping the foreplay and getting right into the real questions, aren't we? I never would have guessed that the great librarian would open herself up to me so easily. You must know, I personally think it has tampered written all over it. From the constant praise of the council, to the inconsistency with her own thoughts and words. So, while most of it is in speculation of what could be one's own inconsistent memory, I always thought that the Battle of Kuroyuri was the most damning proof against it. The Battle of Kuroyuri, one of the few battles between Trinity and Gehenna that never had a definitive victor. Her diary and other Trinity-based sources claim the fight was a long, drowned-out, one-on-one, brutal firefight with one of Gehenna's strongest generals. But multiple outside sources, like the other districts at the time, mentioned no more than six gunshots. Two of the toughest soldiers of the two biggest districts in Kivotos, stuck in a building, alone, with close to no gunshots. If they didn't settle it with firearms, then how do you think they settle things? Hmm, I suppose I've never really thought about it that way. I was always under the impression they fought it out with their fists. Or a battle of wits, maybe. For any historian, such a simple idea would suffice. But think about it. Some of the worst rivals in all of Kivota's history, both possessing a hatred originating back from when they were both just common foot soldiers. These two have looked down the barrels of each other's guns more than any other. They've seen each other at their weakest, not their strongest. What? Where are you going with this? And here they are, in the same building, alone. Isn't it strange that they both walked out alive? Wait, are you implying they may have been colluding? Shockingly, we were secret, forbidden lovers! <laughs> you see, it all boils down to the fact that... Today's guide video focuses on this elegant looking lady from the Wake Up Work Club, Urawa Hanako. She's wearing my white polo and she's ready to take on the summer heat. Along with Ui, Hinata, and Koharu, they ventured on an Asian ruin to fulfill the investigation request from the sisterhood. But hold on, why are they here in the swimsuits? I mean, not that I mind. And most importantly, Hanako, 
Are you really wearing something? A story as classic as time. Two rivals born to kill one another. Oh, Hanako. I... But it all changes when the respect they have for their rival turns into something much more personal. Love. Lust. They don't want to see their opponent dead in the ground anymore. They want to see their opponent on the ground panting and red in the face. Hanako. I really think... Imagine the tension as they both walk into that old building. Everyone around thinking they're the one to fight, but in reality, the only thing fighting are their tongues and their hands reaching for each other's. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at their stats. He's the first ever Sonic AR Striker, who has an S rank combat power on Urban Warfare, A rank on Field Warfare, and D rank Indoors. He uses Wolvesec and anti tekira mechanism as level up materials. He equips a hat, a hairpin, and a watch. This build is standard for a crit damage oriented DPS. A 3 stars level 90 with tier 9 hat and hairpin and tier 8 watch. Anako has 37,560 HP, 4,979 attack, 750 crit, and 244% crit damage. At relationship rank 20 on both versions of herself, Anako gains 107 attack, 243 healing, and 1,135 max HP. Unfortunately, her original version doesn't provide additional attack stat. Popping her cheeks to 5 stars, EW30 will significantly increase her stats. That's 7,809 max HP and 1,982 attack. Her exclusive weapon is a modified Enfield L85A2 with a straightforward name, Honest Wish. She doesn't want to tell us the meaning of its name, but if you get to know about her and her honest, perhaps selfish wish, then I guess you could see the true meaning behind it. Anyways, at EW40, her enhanced skill is upgraded with an additional increase to attack and crit damage. We'll tackle more about this in the next section. Leveling up her exclusive weapon to 50 will improve her max HP and attack by 1302 and 359 respectively. Before we proceed to Hanako's skills, let's introduce the newest attack type, Sonic. This attack type was introduced when the second Summer Trinity event was released. For the meantime, let's call it by its color. Here's the new effectiveness chart. In a nutshell, purple beats itself, purple deals neutral damage to red, red deals less damage to purple, purple deals less damage to yellow, and purple deals 1.5 times damage to blue. Now, we got laid by Hanako, I, huh? I mean, we laid everything about Hanako and her attack type. Let's see if she's actually good by analyzing her skills. Her EX skill is called Wet All Over, and this tool cost EX skill deals 642 damage to all enemies in a fan shape area. Additionally, if Hanako's water gauge charge is at least 1, her EX skill will be readily available again for use after activation, after which one water gauge charge will be consumed. So how Hanako charges her water gauge? Let's check out her sub skill, filling up. And whenever her allies except herself use their EX skill, Hanako's water gauge will increase by 40% and she gets one full charge once it reaches 100%. Hanako can store up to two charges and for each time she gets a full charge, she increases her attack by 38.3% for 20 seconds. This EX skill has a considerable range and it can hit all of Kurokage's hitboxes. Once you completely max her water gauge, she can spray the cat three times in a row. This is great because normally, within the duration of Akko and Himari's buffs, most of your DPS can fire their EX skill up to 2 times. Hanako's animation before the actual hit give us enough window to use Akko and Himari, filling up Hanako's water gauge for later. Her basic skill is called Take It All, and for every 30 seconds, she throws her phallic shaped balloon and deals 225% damage to all enemies in a circular area. This honey wall will burst on impact and leave a mysterious pink liquid with a lingering 20.7% defense break effect on the same circular area that lasts for 20 seconds. This basic skill is a great help against Korokage, considering that the stinky cat has 1000 defense, and the lingering defense debuff lasts for a good amount of time, and the skill only has a 10 second window between each activation. And the best part of this skill is that this is the very first aural defense debuff for my basic skill. Okay, let's have a quick recap. Buffs and debuffs of the same type override each other if they are from the same source and they have the same targeting type. So unless Nexon release a unit with a similar looking debuff, this pink puddle won't conflict with other defense debuffs. To utilize the defense break, you set up your team to maximize Hanako's water gauge and then once Hanako chose her massive thing, 
prepared the cat with all what she got. Her enhanced skill is called Midsummer Truth, and unlike most enhanced skills, she gets a split of 16.2 attack and 16.2 crit damage. Improving her exclusive weapon to 2 stars will further increase her attack and crit damage by 358 and 2320 respectively. This makes her more than your average AoE trash mob sweeper. Anoko's kit relies on her attack and crit damage buffs more to make her f her enemies harder. She will spread her a**s while her massive d is getting their in They can scream all they want, but no one will save them from Hanako their with this massive hunt. If that's the case, go for her EX skill first, then the sub skill, enhanced skill, and lastly, her basic skill. We're about to get laid, I mean laid out everything about Hanako. Now, let's point out her strengths and weaknesses. Hanako is either specially designed to counter Kurokage, or Kurokage was designed to be countered by Hanako. Her spammable EX skill and her AoE defense debuff contributes a lot on clearing this total assault boss. Due to the benefits of Sonic attack type against special armor, Hanako can greatly contribute on Ghost Pace 1 and Perilzilla as well. And outside of total assaults, she's still usable as a strong AoE mob sweeper on 3 different armor types. Might as well bring her against heavy armored enemies, and she can spread their a**** wide open and shove a hunt up their a**** just the same. What about her limitations? If anything, her water gauge gimmick requires a formation to revolve around her. You see, if you fully charge her water gauge, her ES skill steals one of her skill slots, and it might be just in the way if you need to use someone else. And it can be annoying if you don't have Hanako as your main DPS. Well, it's best to come up with a workaround if you're set in using Hanako. In conclusion, is Hanako actually good? Yes, as she holds the reputation of limited anniversary units being absurdly good. Not even a lack of clothing can stop her from destroying her enemies. Well, bold of me to assume that it's a handicap in the first place. Hanako is a very flexible unit that you can utilize in a variety of content. And unsurprisingly, she is great on what she does. She is the very first unit who has a redraw mechanic on her EX skill. So using her might startle you a bit. If you want to excel on Kurokage, also consider pulling for Kikyo. It's your only support during the Kurokage Total Assault who can increase Hanako's sonic effectiveness. And her defensive debuff on her EX skill won't override Hanako's. And lastly, she's our second swimsuit unit on a week-long double 3 star rate banner. If you miss her banner, you still have a chance on a 3rd anniversary banner with Hina. To make your shine brighter, go straight for EW50. And that's it for Hanako's guide video. We briefly cover her strengths and weaknesses based on her stats and skills. So if you want more Blue Archive content and streams, go ahead and subscribe now. I simulcast here on YouTube and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tomogumodu. And feel free to join the Tomodachi community discord server. That's it for now, and... Hmm? I misinterpreted the diary of Sister. And so, Sister, feeling a mix of hatred, love, pride, and loss, dragged herself back to her troops and reported the stalemate, one that Trinity had to take great care to twist into a victory, just as Gehenna had done. <laughs> oh, I apologize. Have I blown your mind with that revelation? A revelation? Wasn't that just a plot of an era novel? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. We will never know. But we already knew! You're spotting lies! And, and... Sokoro, how could you? Do you really support Trinity's revisionist history? It's arresting me, confirmation that even the JDF is complicit in the dark, twisted, fake history of Trinity? What? No! You know it's covering up everything? So stop referring to history in your weird and twisted way! Eh? No covering up. Well, if you insist, Miss Justice Task Force. <laughs> what are you doing? Hold that up right now! <laughs> oh my! Kahar, do we all need to uncover ourselves? What? what? You said so yourself! No one's covering up anything, right? Oh? I see, Koharu. Would you feel more comfortable if none of us were hiding anything from you? You want everything on full display? <laughs> well, there goes any weight this discussion had. Hinata, you realize you don't need to actually start taking everything off, right? Oh, well, I just thought it would help. 
Sensei, should we all dress to help Karu? What? How long have you been watching us? 